Hello space fans and welcome to Your Sky Tonight for August 2nd, 2017. I'm Tony Darnell from deepastronomy.space. Now, since I've started this video series, many of you have been asking why I'm not showing things from the southern hemisphere. Why can't we take a look at some things from the southern skies? And I will do that periodically, but since I live in the North American hemisphere, uh, the North American continent and the northern hemisphere of the planet, I tend to focus on what's up tonight in that region. However, everything I've shown you in this video series can be seen from the southern hemisphere with the exception of a few constellations. But everything I've said with respect to the moon, Saturn, and Jupiter, and some of the constellations we've looked at, some of the brighter stars, can still be seen from the southern hemisphere. So what I'd like to do with this episode is to show you what would happen if we went further south. Now ideally, we would like to we would like to go in a straight line, all due south, so that I can show you what the sky would look like at the same time in different latitudes. But because of geography getting in the way, the continents aren't exactly aligning up that way, I have to make small shifts. So before we leave, if let's take one glance over our shoulders from facing south to facing north, and let's take a look at the location of the North Star or Polaris. It is the end star of the constellation known as the, the Little Dipper or Ursa Minor. And so we can see that it is, depending on where you are in the northern hemisphere, uh, about halfway to uh, uh, three quarters of the way up from the horizon. Now if we, so let's head south, and if we go due south, let's say to Central America, the first thing we'll notice is that the line created by the Moon, Saturn, and Jupiter along the ecliptic plane is higher in the sky. And if we turn north, we can see that the North Star is very low in the northern sky. We almost can't see it at all. It might be behind some trees in the jungle, but it's very, very low. And the Big Dipper is almost touching the horizon itself. So let's go further south to somewhere in South America. If we continue on our southern trek, let's say to Peru, the, now something extraordinary happens. The plane of the ecliptic is very high in the sky, but instead of facing south to see most of these events, it's actually easier to face north. And we can see the the planets and the moon and the sun almost directly overhead from this latitude. The North Star is not visible at all. It's gone from our sight and Arcturus is still visible. So is Jupiter, so is the moon, and so is Saturn. But now we're very far south. So we'll continue to look north. Now we go down to say Chile, where many of the world's greatest observatories are now we see a view not too unlike what we see from the northern hemisphere, only now to see it, we have to look north. And Jupiter and Saturn and the moon are still very are still visible and still make the line across the ecliptic. So as we go further south, now let's go all the way to the tip of South America. We see that the moon Jupiter and Saturn are even lower in the northern sky. But if we look if we look to the south, we begin to see things we can't see anywhere else. There are constellations unknown to northern hemisphere dwellers. There's the Southern Cross or Crux. There's the constellation Centaurus, Reticulum, and Sculptor. There's also Tucanus and, and Vela. And Teres is visible still in the constellation Scorpius. So lots of really great things can still be seen from the, from the southern hemisphere. But everything I've talked about in your sky tonight is visible also in the south. You just have to look north to see it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode, space fans. Thank you all for listening. And as always, keep looking up.